Today I have the pleasure of being with Father Moises Madrin. Uh, we're housemates here, members of the same community at the Colegio Centro America in Managua. I am glad to have uh, this opportunity to speak about Father Guadalupe. I'll try to do my best to remember uh -huh. the main uh, uh -huh. uh, situations in which I was uh, re working or playing or mm -hmm. talking right. with Guadalupe. Uh, the first uh, c deep contact with Guadalupe and with his uh, brother Patricio was in El Paso, Texas. Uh, I was studying theology in my first year. I think that Guadalupe uh, was in his third year of theology. And uh, I was planning to have a special English course in another place in uh, uh, Alabama, but I was sent by the provincial of New Orleans, I was sent to El Paso. So there were also both brothers, Guadalupe and uh, his brother, Patricio. Mm -hmm. In El Paso, yeah. both, both of them were in El Paso both in when El you were there. Yeah, uh -huh. and we spent about a month and a half and uh, what were we doing there was the following. Both brothers, Guadalupe and Carney, went around the parish of uh, we had there, and uh, they were collecting diff a good number of ch children. And then in the afternoon, I gave them a talk and I was preparing then for First Communion. So there I had a almost daily contact with Guadalupe. And uh, whenever we went out, we were, went together through the different uh, streets around the parish because the priest who was with us used to tell us each day try to go through a different street so that the people will be able to know you well. And then we finished uh, there in El Paso and uh, we went back to St. Mary's and to continue theology. In uh, St. Mary's I had frequent contact with him after the meals or frequently playing football because there were, we, we had a small team uh, of uh, football with Latins with the, the other Jesuit Latins and Guadalupe also would like to play with us. So he was not so good a player, but he liked to stay with us, to talk Spanish and make jokes. So if you could just continue talking about Guadalupe as a person, uh -huh. as a person, as your friend, did, uh, was he easy to get along with? Was he fun to be with, sense of humor? I think that for me it was very, very easy to get along with Guadalupe. Uh, he was a very easy going person. He was uh, very, very friendly. One of the moments or one of the contacts that we have both was learning and practicing English 
and Spanish. After lunch in St. Mary's, we went to an empty class, a big class, and then there I preach. I try to preach in English and Guadalupe try to mm -hmm. preach mm -hmm. in Spanish. And uh, each one uh, was giving the other the advices how we should do it and so forth and so on. This was, we were doing it during a long, long time. Another opportunity to, to relate with Guadalupe were uh, the days when we had the days off of, uh, of theology. And then he was telling us, or telling me, uh, how he was in the army uh, how he was disappointed with uh, you know with the second world war and then he was thinking of becoming a Jesuit so he was telling me his life when he was telling me more about the fact that he was going to abandon the society. He told me before he left it that he was abandoned the society, that he spoke with the, the provincial uh, father, uh, anyway, I don't remember his name, the provincial. Uh, so it was a, a nice uh, friend, and always with the, with the idea of how can I do something for the people in Honduras. Mm -hmm. And he was friendly, he was yogi with us, and mm -hmm. was, so as I said, it was easy to get along with him. Mm -hmm. No, it was no problem. Okay. And did he live here in this house for that month? Yes. He yeah. lived here in this house? In this colegio, see, uh -huh. in this house. Okay. He stayed there okay. because he was uh, trying to uh, get the, the permission of the provincial. So he used to go walk uh, early in the morning trying to get uh, some contact. He hid in, in Managua with people from Honduras and then planning planning the uh, change of his life. So would you say he was basically motivated by love for the people, the poor, especially the peasants of Honduras, oh, yes. and yes. saw this as a way of changing conditions of life for them for the better? And I think what was also uh, very, very important for him was he didn't want to cause any problem to the Society of Jesus. So that's why he decided to get out of the society. So as soon as he received all the papers from the provincial, then he went, yeah, he didn't say anything. So he went to Honduras. Well, he, he was probably associating with Honduran revolutionaries here, yes, right, and yeah. talking about what they were going to do, and then yeah. they went up into Honduras. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, he was, that why, while he was the two months in, he was related also with people from Honduras. Mm -hmm. In your friendship with Guadalupe, your association with him in the study of theology, and then in, in El Paso, and here in Nicaragua, did he share with you much about his spirituality, his commitment to Christ, his commitment to the gospel? Well, I would say yes, yes. Uh, because when he was thinking to abandon the society and join the revolution in Honduras, 
he was doing it because of uh, the love for the farmers, for the poor people, mm -hmm. for uh, the farmers, for people in Honduras, for poor people. Uh, dedication to the purpose of the gospel to make people free. Eh? What Jesus said uh, many times to the people, I came for, so that you will have life. Eh? Mm -hmm. So as the same way that Jesus said he was uh, doing, uh, spent his life doing good, this was the idea of Guadalupe, mm -hmm. to do good for the poor people uh, who were suffering so much from the point of view of the government or uh, economic or uh, lack of education. If, for instance, when he was for a while in uh, San Juan de Limay, he went uh, to the edge of town near the cemetery and in a very very poor house he entered there and that was his residence because he wanted to be also a very poor guy he wanted uh, that i should go with him to san juan de limay but at that time i was working here in the school and i was in san juan de limay two or three times but during during holy week mm -hmm. uh, uh, helping helping, helping their, their uh -huh. mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, the last time i was there in san juan de limay i couldn't come back to managua through esteli because it was the beginning of the revolution in nicaragua so Did did you know Patrick, John Patrick oh, Carney yes, very well too? Well, quite well. Would you like to just share a little bit about... Patrick, uh... Patrick was more intellectual mm -hmm. and less, uh, let's say, less pastoral minded than Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. Patrick was always intellectual, mm -hmm. talking always about the great theologians. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and he was reading, he was studying harder, or reading a lot of theology. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Limay, San Juan de Limay here in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. uh, where Guadalupe was working as a pastor, I believe, of the parish. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that and how you yeah. knew him there? Uh, more or less, uh, uh, this, this meeting or this uh, idea of Guadalupe that I should go with him to San Juan de Limay was at the end of the period when he was already uh, about to go to Honduras. Since I was before Guadalupe in, in Lima, he was trying to convince me to go and, and to work with him. It was not possible for me to work with him uh, because I was uh, working here in the school of Colegio Centro America and uh, in San Juan de Lima, I just spent there during Holy Week. And also, at the same time, he had in mind the idea of uh, working in Honduras and helping the guerrillas. To make a revolution in Honduras, which is what he saw here, yes. a revolutionary government in place here from 1979. Mm -hmm. Why was he thrown out of Honduras? More or less the idea I had is that 
the army of Honduras were chasing or following after Guadalupe because the army thought that he was a, a subversive priest. Uh, finally, the army got him and put him in a plane and sent him at, to the States. And he came for a while first to Nicaragua with the idea of uh, later going back to Honduras. So that's why he stayed for a while. He came to the, this school, Colegio Centro America, was talking with the provincial, and uh, finally he decided to abandon the society and to join uh, the guerrillas in Honduras. And he decided to abandon the society in order to cause uh, no problem to the society by the fact that he was becoming a member of the guerrillas Honduran Revolution. So he stayed for a while until, until he arranged his uh, separation from the society and was able to uh, go back to Honduras. And that's why he stayed here for about two months in the school. Right. Now, and we used to walk. Uh, frequently at nights, and he was uh, explaining me why he was going to Honduras basically, again. Basically, as you said, to serve the poor and to do something mm -hmm. beneficial in terms of achieving greater justice, a more just society for the poor. Yeah. He was based on love, based on his love of Christ and his love of the people. Now, do you think he might have, would he have wanted to return to the society if he had lived through that and was no longer involved with an armed revolutionary group? Uh, no, I don't think that he was thinking to come back to the society because he knew that as a whole, well, the man who abandoned the society, well, this was for good, for good. So, but the reason is because he was thinking that uh, in Nicaragua, the Sandinista revolution had achieved the liberation of the people, a new country, a new place, a new life. So he decided, well, I will go to Honduras, we'll do the same, and Honduras will become a free country and the farmers and the poor people will achieve uh, a different way of life. Well, the only thing that I can add was that he was really in love with the poor people of Honduras and he wanted to be as close as possible with the farmers, with the poor people, and uh, he th thought that he couldn't do it living as a Jesuit, so he said, I want to be free of the relation with the society, and I want to give my whole life to, uh, to the movement, to the revolution in, in Honduras. In this way, I can give myself completely, I can manifest my love for the poor people of Honduras, so I will go there. That's why uh, he decided to abandon the society and to join the guerrilla. Did he know that he was seriously risking his life? I think so, I think so, uh, because, well, you know that uh, 
at that time the, the guerrilla was persecuted by the government of Honduras and the people who were in the mountains working uh, as members of this new movement for liberation of Honduras, he knew that he was risking his life completely. Mm -hmm. But he decided, nevertheless, he decided to go. 